Hello everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome back to another true crime video. So the case that I have for you today is a little bit of a short one, but it's a very interesting case that honestly sounds like something out of a movie. It's a wild one, so I'm really looking forward to hearing everyone's thoughts on this case after the video. But before we get into the case, I wanted to go ahead and say a huge thank you to GlassesUSA.com for partnering with me on today's video. If you're anything like me and you are very visually impaired like I am, then you know how expensive glasses can be and how much of a hassle it can be to get them directly from your eye doctor. However, GlassesUSA.com makes that process so much easier and so much more affordable. By cutting out the middleman, GlassesUSA.com offers prescription eyeglasses up to 70% off of retail prices. You can now shop for your prescription eyeglasses online without ever leaving your home, all at affordable prices. GlassesUSA.com offers over 10,000 styles of glasses and sunglasses, including in-house brands like Audido, which is what I'm wearing right now, these eyeglasses are also Audido. Then I have a pair of my Ray-Ban sunglasses, which are another one of my go-to sunnies. I love having extra pairs of glasses and sunglasses. I always have a pair of sunglasses in my car, and then I have one in my purse to make sure that I always have some because my eyes are very sensitive to light, so I always need to make sure I have some sunglasses with me. I also like having a pair of regular glasses in my overnight bag and in my car as well. So, you know, if I end up staying the night at a friend's house or I go on vacation and I forget to actually like physically pack my glasses, then I know I always have some nearby. GlassesUSA.com also has designer brands like Ray-Ban, like I said, Oakley, Gucci, and so many more. You can find any style and color that you can imagine, as well as specialty glasses like kids' glasses, sports glasses, safety glasses, and so many more. Also, with GlassesUSA.com, you can add any prescription to almost any pair of frames, including sunglasses and blue light blocking glasses, which are great if you spend a lot of time looking at screens all day, like a lot of us do for work. GlassesUSA.com is also the perfect place to stock up and save on your contact lenses, which is what I wear when I'm not wearing my glasses. You can get 25% off all contact lens brands, including Vista, AccuV, Daily, BioInfinity, which is what I wear, and so many more. They're available with any prescription for all uses. I personally wear contacts most of the day when I'm at work or when I'm working out. The best part of GlassesUSA.com, though, is the price point. A complete pair of glasses starts at only $39, and free basic prescription lenses are included with every frame. It's so easy. All you do is enter your prescription, place your order, and that's it. You're done. Standard shipping is free on all orders, no matter how much you spend, and if for some reason you aren't happy with your order, you have 14 days to return it for a refund, exchange, or 100% store credit, no questions asked. Now, GlassesUSA.com is offering an exclusive discount for my viewers on top of the coupon code that they already have on their website, but as of right now, it's only available for 24 hours, so make sure you click the link on the top of my description box to get the details for that. Thank you again so much to GlassesUSA.com for partnering with me on today's video. And as I do in any video that I do where I'm wearing my glasses, I will be taking off the glasses for the remainder of the video because I know that the glare is bothersome for some people. With that being said, let's get into the case. Today, we are going to be discussing the case of Amy Caroline Brown. Amy Caroline Brown was 24 years old, living in Edmonds, Washington. She went to Edmonds Woodway High School. Then she went on to Edmonds Community College before working at the Edmonds Museum for some time. Then, she started work as a groomer and a dog walker. According to her own Google Plus page, she described herself as a nerd. She loved vampire stories, but not the stuff like Twilight, but the stuff like Dracula, Vampire Chronicles, and things like that. She wrote about herself, quote, I am me. I live, breathe, I think. Each person sees the world differently, and I want to spend my life learning what everyone else has to say. Now, even though Amy seemed to be your typical, normal, young woman who just has some quirky interests and may not be the most outgoing, she actually had a very dark, demented mind. She had aspirations of becoming a famous serial killer, so Amy went on Craigslist and found an ad that popped up that made her feel like she had the perfect opportunity to make her dream a reality. The person who posted the ad ended up being a 29-year-old man whose name I do not think has been released publicly, 
but some articles have referred to him as Mr. Johnson, so that is what I am going to call him. Mr. Johnson would go on to say that at 29, he still lived with his parents, he wasn't all that social, and he was seeing a therapist who encouraged him to get out there and be more social, to, you know, go out in the world, meet new people, and make friends. So that man followed his therapist's advice. So he made that post to Craigslist and he would later go on to say that the post was made to attract someone for a friendship or for dating purposes, but it wasn't necessarily to elicit sex or anything like that. Either way, the title of the ad was Good Evening, Let's Go Zombie Hunting. This caught the attention of Amy, so she responded to the ad. But she didn't use her real name at first. She responded under some sort of alias. She would later say that she was worried that he may have been a serial killer, so she didn't want to give him her real name at first. After responding, the pair discussed what to do, and they landed on meeting up at a sports bar called Cliffhangers in Linwood, Washington on January 29th, 2022. The day before the meetup, Amy spent the day watching the NBC show Hannibal. Hannibal is a show based on the characters and themes from the book Hannibal by Thomas Harris. I have also personally seen the show and obviously watching it does not make someone a serial killer or demented or, you know, mentally unwell. It's actually a decent show for those of you who have not seen it. But overall, Amy was very interested in the whole theme of darkness, gore, horror, and crime, which is honestly why that Craigslist ad intrigued her so much to begin with. Then the evening came, the two met up at the bar, and they started chatting. They spent the evening chatting, and the two seemed to hit it off pretty well, pretty quickly. Amy joked a couple times, asking Mr. Johnson if he was a serial killer, to which he obviously said no. Then they got to talking about their favorite TV shows and films and they realized that they had a lot in common and the conversation was just flowing really well. Eventually, the conversation did turn sexual and at that point, Amy asked Mr. Johnson if he wanted to go somewhere to hook up and he said yes. But because he lived with his parents, they decided to go to a motel rather than, you know, going to his place. So Mr. Johnson got in the car with Amy and she drove him home to his parents' house so that he could get some cash from his parents to pay for that motel room. I guess he went in, asked his parents for money, saying that he would pay them back later, and obviously they gave him the money for it. Then they went and booked a room at the Rodeo Inn on Highway 99, where Mr. Johnson again paid for the room. Once in the room, the two remained clothed, and they just laid on the bed talking for a while while they spent some time cuddling. Then Amy climbed on top of Mr. Johnson, and she asked him again, saying, you're not a serial killer, are you? To which again, Mr. Johnson said, no, he's not. He started laughing because he thought that Amy maybe just had this very strange, quirky sense of humor, and he assured her that he was not a serial killer, as he had been assuring her the entire evening. But then, out of absolutely nowhere, she sat on top of Mr. Johnson and straddled him, saying, because I am a serial killer. He laughed for just a moment before she lifted her arms above her head, now holding the pocket knife, and stabbed Mr. Johnson in the chest. Immediately, Mr. Johnson started to fight Amy off, he pushed her off of him and tried grabbing the knife from her, and from there, there was a vicious battle for survival. After fighting with Amy for a few minutes, he finally managed to get her off of him and get the blade out of her hands before running out of that motel room as fast as he could. He stumbled around until he finally spotted a Walgreens that was just adjacent to the hotel. He went to the desk and pleaded with the clerk to call emergency services as blood poured from the wound in his chest and all over the store and behind his path. So, of course, emergency services arrived and he was taken to an ambulance for life-saving measures. He was first taken to Swedish Hospital in Edmonds, but once he was there, they realized that he had suffered a collapsed lung from the stab wound, which was a potentially fatal injury. So, he was then transferred to Harborview Medical Center for more intensive care. He was left with a one to two inch laceration with a punctured lung, but thankfully, he did survive this attack. At the same time that the man was on his way to the hospital, police responded to that rodeo in motel. 
They were able to spot Amy as she was running across the parking lot, attempting to make it back to her car to leave. But police did stop her, and when they did, she asked, am I caught? Police asked her about the stabbing and she replied, I'm a loon. Then as they spoke with her by her car, police noticed that her vehicle had a bumper sticker that reads, I've got a perfect body, but it's in the trunk and beginning to smell. So not a very good job at hiding her psychopathic tendencies, apparently. Most people would have this bumper sticker as sort of a morbid joke, which I could see a lot of people having, but paired with the fact that she was just accused of stabbing somebody, they knew they had their person. Either way, police patted her down and started searching her, and right away, they found that she had a pocket knife in her pants pocket. Also, when searching her, police found a note that had been folded up and stuffed in the back pocket of her pants. Police opened the note, and it read, quote, if you are wondering what I want to do with the heart, I eat it. I will strike again. It turned out that Amy had planned on leaving this note behind on Mr. Johnson's body to be discovered when, you know, authorities discovered his body after murdering him. She would go on to say that just like on the show Hannibal, she planned to murder her victim, cut out his heart, and eat it before she was going to leave and move on to her next victim. Police reported that when they first apprehended her, she spoke with absolutely no emotion. She immediately told the police that she was a loon and she wanted to become a serial killer. Officers said that she didn't even seem remotely concerned with what she had just done. The arresting officer said, quote, She was extremely emotionless when she spoke to me about attempting to kill the victim. At one point throughout the conversation, she was more concerned with missing work the following day than facing the possible consequences of an aggravated assault. Of course, Amy was arrested and booked into jail and police started their investigation. When searching her home, detectives found an entire collection of Hannibal DVDs as well as a journal which outlined her plans to become a serial killer. She had also made drawings of something she called a murder shack I tried to find out more information on this journal, but there just isn't much out there. What I can imagine is that this drawing is something that she imagined having so that she could lure her victims and then kill them at her kill shack. Police also found CCTV footage of the two at the bar and then checking into the hotel room. They also found multiple witnesses who saw them both at the hotel and the bar. So she literally could not have planned this out any worse. If she did actually kill him and get away, chances are she would have definitely been caught with the quickness. She definitely would not have gotten away long enough to kill another victim. In fact, I think it literally would have been the same night that she was caught and apprehended. After being taken into the station, after being arrested, of course, Amy was questioned by police again. At that point, she told investigators that she wanted to kill multiple people and her plan was to not be caught for 50 years. Then she would turn herself in and she would let the world know that she is this prolific serial killer and would ask to be put in prison because she can't afford retirement. Because of all of this, Amy was charged with attempted first degree murder and after some time in jail and talking with prosecutors, Amy actually ended up pleading guilty to these charges. She ended up telling investigators that she is a psychopath who has been plagued with homicidal thoughts since she was in middle school. At Amy's sentencing, the prosecutor asked the judge for the maximum penalty allowed for attempted first-degree murder. She talked about the cruel nature of the crime, and she talked about how even though Amy did plead guilty, she showed an egregious lack of remorse for what she did. However, Amy's public defender asked for leniency on multiple grounds. She discussed Amy's young age, being that she was only 24 years old at the time, the fact that she had absolutely no prior criminal record, which was true. Amy had no criminal record besides some traffic infarctions, which is crazy that you just want to jump from, like, nothing to, like, murder, but... Her public defender also pointed to the fact that she pled guilty and she admitted to what she did. Then she discussed Amy's long-standing history of mental illness. Amy's public defender told the judge that Amy had suffered from lifelong mental illness with several prior suicide attempts. She stated that Amy was prescribed antipsychotic medications for her mental health issues, 
but that she suddenly stopped taking them shortly before the crime. She stated, quote, we do not dispute the facts in this case, but Amy's youth, lack of criminal history, and guilty plea prior to the trial mitigate for less than the maximum sentence. Amy's mother was also present at her sentencing hearing. She read a statement saying that she also does not dispute the facts that her daughter committed these acts, but she pleaded with the judge asking that she recognize that Amy was not the kind of person who could do something like this, that this behavior was out of character for Amy. Amy's mother told the courts, this was not my daughter. The judge said prior to sentencing, quote, I am not often at a loss for words, but this case leaves me almost speechless. He said that he understands that Amy has suffered from mental illness. That is very clear. It's very apparent in this case. The judge even went as far as saying that he is no stranger to mental health issues, but he pointed to Amy's egregious lack of remorse. She was emotionless. She didn't feel bad about what she did, and she didn't seem to regret it at all. He said that this is really what left the door open for him to giving her a higher sentence. He said it was indeed Amy that night who made a cruel and conscious decision to kill this guy. In his sentencing, the judge said, quote, you admitted that you've thought of killing someone and eating their heart since you were a teenager, a fairly young teenager. You said that you wanted to become a serial killer and that Mr. Johnson was to be your first victim. You wrote that you would eat his heart and that you would strike again. Years ago, you even purchased special gloves to use in the killing and kept them with this purpose in mind. I am not often at a loss for words, but this case leaves me almost speechless. He went on to say, it's cruel, bizarre, and beyond the pale in terms of how humans treat each other. Your behavior is anathema and not tolerated in a civilized society. It's not a situation where a low-end sentence is appropriate. So the judge ended up handing down a sentence of 18 years in prison for this to be followed by three years of community custody. He said that after her release, obviously she lost her right to own any firearms and lost her right to vote. And of course, the judge placed a lifetime restraining order so that Amy was not to be in contact with her victim or his family at any point in time. So that is where the case sits right now. This case is obviously a very disturbing one. The fact that she was so numb to these types of thoughts that she really just thought that killing someone was no big deal. She also made it seem like she thought that it was going to be easy to just kill someone by stabbing them and then cut their heart out. I don't think she realized how much effort that was really going to take. That was her first stupid mistake because obviously he was able to fight her off pretty easily. But I do also want to talk about what I think about attempted murder. It is my opinion that attempted murder should be treated with the same kind of punishment as actual murder. I think the fact that someone can go and have the full intention of killing someone and for the sole reason that the person is too weak or the other person is too strong and that person survives that suddenly the perpetrator gets less jail time. I think she went in there with every intention to kill him and we know that and the only reason he didn't die is because he is stronger than her and I think that that deserves the same punishment as somebody who actually kills somebody. I understand that there is a difference with the loss of life, but a victim shouldn't be punished with the perpetrator getting a short sentence just because they were strong enough to fight off their attacker and survive. That is really just outrageous to me, and I really want to know what you guys think about that take because to me, I think Amy still should have gotten a life sentence. I think the fact that she admitted to having these fantasies since middle school shows that she is just a messed up individual and I don't really have high hopes for her ability to rehabilitate and join a normal society in 18 years. If anything, I fear that this will just teach her a lesson on how to get away with it next time. I hope that isn't what happens, but that is what I worry about. But either way, that is where I'm going to end today's case. I know this was a shorter one, but there just isn't too much information to go off of here. We don't know too much about Amy or her family or her history. I think that knowing that would be really interesting and could tell us a lot about why she had the mentality that she did and why she had these sick, dark fantasies. But unfortunately, that information just is not available no matter where I looked. 
We also don't know anything about the victim, which is unfortunate because you guys know that I like to take a moment to learn about each victim. But in this case, since he did survive, I completely understand that he wants his privacy. I am obviously very happy that he survived. I do think he made a full recovery. So I hope that things are going well for him, but that's really all I can say about that. But that is all I have for today's video. And now I want to know what you guys think. Do you think that Amy got the sentence that she deserved or do you think that she should have been in for longer since she did attempt and plan to murder someone? Let's discuss this and any other thoughts that you have on this case in the comments below. If you like this video, please make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. I also want to remind you guys the big news that I do have a Facebook page now. I do take the videos from this channel and put a shorter version on that Facebook page. So if you do want like a summary of a case, there are a couple older cases on there right now. So if you want like a brush up on the case or if you want to watch a video of mine but you kind of are looking for more of a summary and you know a quicker version of the video that will also be on that Facebook page so make sure you go ahead and give that page a like and a follow and watch the videos that I have posted on there make sure you go ahead and follow my Twitter and Instagram both will be linked down below as well and if you have absolutely any case suggestions please make sure you send those suggestions to my Google form which will also be linked down below with that I hope you guys have an amazing week Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.